Next, we also have a sign of the convex posterior margin, which is a sign of pathologic fracture. It also makes sense because when you have um, your red marrow in the vertebral body and you have a lot of neoplastic cells there, you're going to have bony expansion. However, you have bony expansion, but of course, because it replaced the normal bone there, it's going to be weak. And when you have axial loading, it can break or produce your pathologic fracture. So when you have increase in mass or bulk in that uh, vertebral body, the configuration would be a convex posterior margin like this. You can compare that to the adjacent vertebral bodies, which are straight or a little bit concave like this. On the other hand, if you have an osteoporotic fracture in which you have low bone mass, you will have a concave margin because you have no increase in number of um, neoplastic cells in there. So you have this somewhat concave margin. And sometimes you can see a retropulsion because of that fracture. Another characteristic is that a presence of paravertebral mass um, makes you uh, think about a pathologic fracture. It also makes sense because we have a um, neoplastic process in the vertebral body which may spread more posteriorly to the pedicles and the spinous process and the transverse process, it can um, spread in the prevertebral region, in the epidural region, which is a characteristic of a neoplastic process. It tries to expand as much as it, as it can. And you wouldn't have that when you just have a benign or an osteoporotic fracture. So we covered um, the following uh, differences between osteoporotic and a pathologic fracture. This is the table lifted from our reference. And you can see here that we covered, uh, you can see here that um, you have abnormal signal in the pedicle and the posterior elements. You have associated soft tissue mass in the pathologic fracture, you have abnormal signal involving the entire vertebral body. And in contrast, you have some sparing of a portion of it in the osteoporotic fracture. And with regards to um, the shape of the posterior wall, you'd have a convex posterior wall in pathologic fracture. We also discussed that fracture lines are um, better seen here in osteoporotic fracture because you have a definite demarcation between the abnormal marrow and the normal, abnormal and normal marrow. So I leave it up to you to memorize that osteoporotic fractures are most likely solitary, while pathologic fractures tend to be multiple. So um, we have to think that you have to take a look at all of the signs to make the diagnosis. So you just don't pick one. To strengthen your diagnosis, you have to uh, weigh how many signs you see that favors osteoporotic and how many signs would make you favor a pathologic fracture. Of course, that's in addition to the clinical data. So thank you very much. Join us next week as we discuss um, os uh, osmotic demyelination, we'll have a mini lecture on that, followed by a one-pager lecture on the following important topics. Thank you very much and good afternoon.